a little over one week ago, as we were standing here in the church, Pilate spoke to our Lord and asked, what is truth? What is truth? This, I believe, is a question that has only become increasingly more pertinent. So many of the ways in which we came to the truth in the past or seem to have come to us in the past are slowly being taken away from us. So recently, there's been a great deal in the news about artificial intelligence, how voices can be imitated, how pictures can be construed, that that which modernity depended on for verifying the truth namely our senses, is no longer available to us. One could go even further to say that in the very depths of science, with the developments in things such as quantum mechanics, even that experimental truth is something that one can no longer point to as objectively there. What does this mean for us today? Does this mean that the truth is subjective, dependent upon our own whims or our own desires? This is again something that we encounter in the world. But this, my friends, this too is a trap. A trap that will ultimately lead to loneliness. If I and my opinions and desires becomes for me the bedrock of truth, becomes a truth in isolation. So then does this mean that the truth is something objective? And again, though it may be a scandal to some of my brothers and sisters, this too is wrong. To say that the truth is objective is the trap of ideology. It's to say that the truth can somehow be contained and described as it is. Christ answered Pilate with silence because he himself is the truth. The truth is a person. The truth is the Son of the living God who has been with him since before the world was created. The truth is that which is unforgettable. The very etymology of the word truth in Greek, aletheia, comes from that prefix a, which is a negation of lethi. Lethi, for those of you familiar with ancient Greek mythology, was the river that the dead would drink from that they would not remember the joys of life. Aletheia. To be remembered by the living God. To be made eternal by the living God. Truth is a person. So naturally this should lead us to the next question. If truth is not something that I can objectively hold, I can contain, I can use, as happens with ideology, if it's not merely my own sentiment or feeling or opinion or reason, how can we come to the truth? We have example of St. Thomas and St. George whose feast day is also celebrated today. St. Thomas, of course, reached out and touched the side that was pierced, confirming what St. John would later say, we have seen with our eyes, we have heard with our ears, we have touched with our hands. 
Christ, the truth. St. George, he too beheld the risen Lord in his glory. He too experienced this theophania, this revelation and appearance of the living God. I may digress for just a moment to speak of St. George. We are told that when he was in prison, that our Lord himself came to him. And this perhaps is my favorite image of St. George. St. George, who is so often seen in his brilliant armor, slaying the dragon. But that night before he was to be martyred, after having undergone gone weeks of torture of the most horrendous variety, St. George lie, was laying in the bottom of that prison cell. And our Lord himself came to him and held him as a child. And yet, we have not had that experience of seeing the risen Lord, of placing our fingers in the mark of the nails. And yet our Christ tells us, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Blessed are those who believe but have not seen. What are we to do with this? How are we to make sense of this? I believe that the answer is here with us, is above us, is all around us. Truth, Christ, is revealed to us in community and as community. It is no accident that throughout the scriptures that the church is referred to as the body of Christ. And if Christ is the truth, then the church is truly the body of the truth. We come to know the truth not by our own reason, but by what we experience in the community of the Holy Spirit, which is the body of our living Christ. Our Lord was not upset with Thomas merely because he doubted, but he did not trust the eleven. He did not trust those who had had that experience of the risen Christ already. In the Politikion of the Feast of today, it says that we come to know the Lord, that we are illumined by the Lord by that revelation that he made through the apostles. In the gospel according to Mark, we hear of the myrrh-bearing women, that Christ appeared afterwards to the eleven, themselves as they were at dinner. And he had blame for their lack of faith and the sensitivity of their hearts because they had not believed those who had seen him risen from the dead. Elder Emilianos of recent memory, the Igomenos and the elder of the Holy Monastery of Simona Petra, has written, but you will say to me, we are swamped every day by the problems of life, by pain, by sickness, by sin, by concerns, by the ragged tatters of our past life. We are worldly. And Elder Emilianos responds, all right. So does that mean that since you are swamped or that since you are such sinners, as much as I am, as much as any Athenite, that you are not also children of God? But again, you'll say to me, we do not see God, either as light or as darkness. We do not have such experiences. They're just a dream for us. How can we bear up in life? There's only impotence and dejection around us, only darkness. What is all this 
my dear friends. No, we live in common and we see in common. Why do you think of yourself as an individual and not as a member of Christ? He goes on to say, the saints say, the scriptures mention time and again and the fathers confirm, Paul confesses and the experience of the mystical life proclaims that God dwells in darkness and in light. If you have not seen him, not recognized him, what does that matter? Are you the touchstone of truth? No. Which is why the experience of the church has told it, tells it and writes it. And since you have heard it, which is precisely why it has greater significance, your senses are not deceiving you. Again, when it comes to truth, it is not our reason, emotion, imagination, or senses that will lead us to Christ. It is and it must be the community. And here, to take a small digression, this does not merely mean the doctrinal teachings of the community, memorizing passages of scriptures, or familiarizing ourselves with the doctrines of the church. But it means to be organically linked through the mysteries of the church and the life of prayer to the community, the communion of the saints to the body of Christ. (coughs) And only then, only then if we truly live the life of Christ as a member of his body, will our heart, our mind, and our very senses be purified that we will come to know the Lord, the risen one, the very truth. In the gospel reading today, we hear this interesting phrase that Christ comes again on the eighth day. Eight days later, it says. In the history of the church, this term eighth day is used as a reference to the last day, the day upon which Christ will return and the dead will be raised. We, you and I, every man from Adam to the last, on the eighth day, as did Thomas, will stand before the risen Christ. We will see him with our eyes. We will hear him with our ears. But if we have not, we have not searched for him in this life. If we have not desired him, hungered with our very flesh, as the psalmist tells us, if we have rejected his face, in the least of these, his brethren. When we see the mark of the nails, we will know that we are responsible. And as St. Isaac tells us, that this love of Christ will be a flame that is greater than any hell we can imagine. But, if we have searched for him, that pearl hidden in the pages of Scripture. We have humbled ourselves not to be the cornerstone of the truth, but to be members of his body, members of his community. We have hungered and thirsted for the Lord. When we see him, we will see the mark of the nails. We will see a love for us, a love so great that it emptied God of his very divinity, that he took on not just the form of a servant, as St. Paul tells us, but became for us a corpse, that he might raise us from the dead. May Christ, our risen Lord, reveal to us the truth, the life, and the great mystery of his resurrection. Amen. Amen.